Hello, friends. In his book, Conversations with Yogananda, Swami Kriyananda wrote in the preface that it had taken him 50 years to present these conversations, to write them down and comment on them. And then he went on to explain for all of our benefit a little bit of how and why. And he mentioned that for those 50 years, the notebooks in which he had written the notes about those conversations were his most precious possession. And he guarded them lovingly. He kept them locked in a safe to be protected from a potential forest fire in California or later when he moved to Italy, he brought them with him to Italy and cared for them very lovingly and he mentioned that in the span of those decades, his own understanding of the conversations had grown. And he went on to say, you know, for a work of this magnitude, it could be understandable to wait centuries, to wait more than a hundred years to publish such a thing. But he, then he went on to say, but I wouldn't, be around any longer to do it. And it would fall to somebody else who would have the considerable disadvantage of not having known Yogananda personally. And so hence he, he went on very humbly, but very bluntly saying, however incompetently I might write them down, at least it's me writing them. And I have a certain understanding of what he said, how he said what he said, with what nuance of facial expression, tone of voice, body language, etc. And so essentially Swamiji was saying, so this is the best compromise that I can produce in the amount of time that I have. I have gained as much understanding as I have in the span of five decades, and now it's time. It's essentially time to to put it on paper and present it as best I can. And I tell this story because in the artistic process, and I, I'll just speak of this from the sense of the art of it. There are a number of other ways I could approach it also, but from the standpoint of art, there is almost inevitably a degree of compromise we only have so much time. We only have so much money to take the time, would be another way to say that. And there are deadlines. Now, Swamiji himself would create deadlines. He was his own sort of sternest taskmaster in terms of deadlines. He, in, in some ways, he loved it when somebody else would give him a deadline because then he could sort of, you know, create boundaries around that deadline and produce. But if nobody else created a deadline for him, he would create a deadline for himself because he would want to do this and want to do that. And so he would start, you know, working backwards from a deadline that he would create. And it automatically created a dynamic tension. And yet, that point of compromise, the place where we have to decide, am I going to make this perfect or am I going to make this good enough? You know, and he, as an editor, as a writer, was always aiming for perfection. He was always aiming for the perfect, the best possible, best, most nuanced way of conveying something and yet he only had a certain amount of time. And so he was looking for that flow. And so I say all this to suggest to all of us, whether we are artists in any traditional sense, painting, film, photography, sculpture, or, you know, I could name a number of others. Whether, we're, whether we think of ourselves as any of those or not, we are all of us artists, 
of our own lives. We are creating the, the work, the opus of our own life. And we have to compromise. We only have so many years, decades, whatever, to do it in. And we have to make the best use of that time. We have to make the best guesstimate, intuitive sense of, I can do this, but doing that much more would be too much, or it would throw it out of balance. And Swamiji was quite masterful at judging those kinds of compromises. Was he always satisfied? No. There were times when we would get a book. I, I, I know this particular one personally because I typeset it. We, we had just arrived in India and it was the first sort of job that we did in a sense while we were getting ourselves set up there. But while we were getting ourselves set up, we were also creating a publishing house and beginning to publish his books. And this was the first one of them. And I remember there was a deadline as, as was to be expected. We had a plane flight scheduled and the final night before that plane flight, several of us stayed up essentially the entire night. I might have been the last one to stay up the entire night. And I finished about 45 minutes before we had to leave for the airport and had a chance to get upstairs, take a shower, you know, pack a few last minute things, get the, get the materials ready to be given to the publisher, the printer, and, you know, then get out the door and go with, on to catch a plane. And I remember this feeling, this incredible feeling of just absolute exertion in one sense and perfect centeredness, perfect flow, perfect relaxation in that moment. And I think that's what Swamiji was looking for in his life, was that sense of, I have given it everything. I have put everything into this book. There's nothing that I held back. There's nothing that I meant to say but didn't say or couldn't say or whatever. And we should, all of us in our lives, strive to have said whatever needed to be said, to have been whatever we aspired to become in this lifetime with the amount of time that we have. Because we don't know if it's tomorrow or five minutes from now or next week or 25, 50, 75 years from now, whatever it may be. Take the best use of each moment and there is no regret from the past. And that's a beautiful feeling to live with. Namaste.